Hi everyone. So today a special recipe. Uh, it is a recipe that is the height of Creole cuisine. And um, it's something that I came across because of all things several months ago, I was shopping in an Asian market in Herndon, Virginia, which is a suburb uh, slightly south of uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, in the Asian markets, which are known for their fabulous seafood selections, I mean, you actually can buy fish that are still floating in the, or that are still swimming in the aquariums, and they, they clean them to your specifications. There's charts on the wall uh, at, with fish cleaned in various stages, and you tell them, I want it cleaned to stage six, or I want it cleaned to stage one, depending upon what you're going to do with them. Anyway. anyway. There was pompano, which I had known, I've never eaten one, which I had known was a very fancy fish. So I got some pompano and uh, went home and wanted a good recipe for pompano and I found pompano en papillette and found out that that was pompano in a sealed parchment paper and that it was in fact invented at Antoine's in New Orleans in the 18th century, no, seven, 19th century, and, uh, and it was created in honor of the Frenchman who invented hot air balloons, who was going to be dining at Antoine's. And the idea was to uh, put this pompano with um, vegetables and a white wine sauce and everything into a sealed parchment, bake it, and the parchment paper would rise like a balloon and it would be served in the parchment and the diner would, the guest of honor, would pierce the parchment and steam would come out and then you'd have this glorious uh, pompano with the steamed vegetables and the crab meat and the shrimp and whatnot. Well, <clears throat> it was a very elegant dish. But it turns out that you can do anything on papillette with parchment paper, which I have here. And uh, I don't have pompano right now. I just have a simple white fish fillet. Uh, but I am going to nevertheless do it on pompillon. So uh, this is the ingredients that I have to do this simple dish tonight. So uh, I am going to use sherry instead of white wine. I'm going to make a butter, a lemon garlic butter. This is butter. I always keep butter at, some butter at room temperature. I'm using minced garlic and olive oil. I have lemon. I'm using uh, fresh basil. I happen to have um, Vidalia onions. I would use, if I had it, I would use um, shallots. I am going to use capers. I have uh, marinate, marinated artichoke hearts in olive oil. Of course, I've already put salt and pepper on the whiting fillet. I have my parchment paper, and I have, uh, a la Julia Child, a glass of, um, well, it used to be sparkling uh, champagne from Germany, but um, it has... Um, Lost some of its fizz, but I'm going to finish off the bottle tonight. So I'm going to take some of the softened room temperature butter and um, I'm going to add some um, lemon zest to it. Not too much. Now slice a nice chunk of it. And squeeze a little fresh juice into the bag. And 
just a little bit of the minced garlic. Now, in the best of all possible worlds, I would use fresh garlic, but I always just keep this minced garlic and olive oil in the refrigerator because I find it comes in very handy. So it just gets mixed up and it's just going to go uh, right on top of the fish when we put it into the parchment paper. And then I'm going to slice just a little bit of the onion. If I had shallot, I would use that. But I'm just a poor boy. But we do try to slice it as finely as possible to hopefully get it to dissolve as much as possible. It's pretty, pretty fine. And um, we're just going to slice a couple of the, little bit of the lemon just to put on top of the fish. sure the seeds are out of it. So let me move this to where you can see what I'm doing. So I put some foil on my baking sheet. fish. to put some of the basil on the bottom to let it kind of sit on a little bit of basil because I'm going to save some for the top. Put the fish there and I'm going to put some of the butter. top of the fish. Now I do have my oven heating up to 450 degrees because um, you want it to expand you want the steam from the fish um, expand the balloon. Got some of the onions around here. Okay. 
Here's some papers. Love papers. Choke hearts on here. Now, if I had some crab meat or shrimp, I put that on here too. Put some more basil. Put a couple of lemon slices on there. And then finally, I am going to put, if I had dry sherry, white dry sherry, I'd put it on there, or else you could use white wine. I just happen to like the taste of sherry and butter. Those are my days of having sherry butter with lobster. So I think that's enough. <clears throat> okay, that's the oven telling me it's at 450. And there you can see what it looks like before it goes, before we wrap it. Now, I'll show you how we're going to um, seal the parchment paper. I'm going to take one end of it, roll it over, then you're going to You seal it kind of like you seal an empanada. Make sure you pinch parchment paper so that it is tight. Some people like to oil their parchment paper on the inside. It isn't necessary because you have butter on the um, on the fish and um, so it's going to the fish is in no possible way is is it going to stick to the parchment paper and you know it's going to hinder making the seal but you do have to make sure both sheets are joined otherwise you're wasting your time So there you have it in the parchment paper, and it's rolled up around the edges. So in it goes into a 450 degree oven. I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes. And I'm going to get my plates ready to plate it when it comes out. And I think I have a little bit of this um, German sparkling wine. Cheers. While we're waiting for the fish to finish cooking, uh, some of you may recall from an early co earlier cooking video that I had uh, started to collect several years ago, fine china, 
and that it got out of hand. And more recently, I've started to get rid of fine china. Um, but I still have a few sets, and uh, I'm starting to use them in these cooking videos when I plate my food. Um, this particular set is from the Minton China Factory, from, and it's a pattern from several years ago, uh, which was done in the late 40s through, I think, the early 60s. Um, it's Minton, uh, and it's, the name of the pattern is Malta. Um, the goblet is Irish Crystal. It's not Waterford. It's from an actually a much smaller facility than Waterford. Waterford's, of course, been gobbled up by the same company that gobbled up Wedgwood and Wall Dalton, and they're all owned by conglomerates now, and the craftsmanship has gone down considerably. Um, this is a rimmed china, meaning that it has a center section, which is where the food is actually supposed to be put, and this rim is supposed to be um, reserved for the decoration. And of course, it's a small, I guess maybe seven or eight inch uh, area, which was, you know, which is supposed to be all the food you're supposed to have. Actually, you're only supposed to have the main course on this plate, and they had a variety of other um, sized plates to put the other courses on uh, in fine dining and in days gone by. Um, this has. Um, one of the Minton stamps on it. Um, no, you really, it's not focusing fast enough. But this is not the one that you usually see for Minton. Uh, I had another set of Minton, which after the house fire, I actually gave away to a neighbor. And I'm kind of sorry I did that. But anyway, uh, you know, after the house fire, you're very emotional and not really thinking clearly. And I gave a lot of stuff away. Uh, in retrospect, I wish I hadn't. Ah, there's the timer. So we'll take the fish out of the oven. Well, it's puffed up a little bit, as you can see. We will pierce it. It'd be easier if I had two hands instead of holding one hand with the camera. So, there's this somewhat dramatic um, whitefish on papillot. Um, and I'm serving it with a uh, lettuce and tomato salad, which has a homemade Thousand Island dressing. And I am going to do the uh, recipe for that in another segment. And it's a unusual recipe because it has an ingredient in it uh, which I haven't seen in any of the uh, online recipes for Thousand Island dressing uh, but which is an ingredient included in the World War I cookbook for Thousand Island dressing and um, we'll get to that in um, a subsequent segment. Let's do the taste test. Well, the fish is flaky. It's done really well.
very good. All the flavors have come together. The lemon garlic butter with the sherry really enhances it a great deal. The basil adds a nice touch. Since I like olives, I don't think a few chopped olives would have hurt this at all. I wish I had a nice soft dinner roll to sop up some of this garlic butter. Try not to choke heart. Mm. The capers are good. Everything's delicious. It makes for a dramatic presentation at the table for your guests. So I strongly urge you to try it. Um, the white fish wasn't the perfect fish, although it tastes very good. Any flaky fish would do, uh, chicken would do. Um, salmon, they say you can use. I wouldn't recommend tuna, I think it's too dense. Um, I think cod would be terrific. Flounder would be terrific. Tilapia would be pretty good. Um, um, redfish would be pretty good. Any one of those, um, a trout would be very good. Any one of those types of fish would be good. And it would certainly be a much more elegant and tasteful dish with um, crab meat and shrimp. So anyway, something to try. I don't think it was particularly difficult to do. Uh, the most difficult part was rolling up the parchment paper um, and slicing the onion. So uh, till next time, take care and I hope to see you all soon.